Hello everyone! Welcome to a new video on our channel, AF Prints and Crafts. In this tutorial we'll show you how to paint skin tones using only three colors and our airbrush. In this video, we'll be using a rocky bust created by Wicked. If you're interested in acquiring this model and many others, you can do so through their Patreon account, which is linked in the description below. For our first color and as the base color, we will use the flesh tone from Airbrush Colors. For the shadows, we will use our second color, which is red terracotta from Vallejo. Finally, for the highlights, we will apply pale flesh, also from Vallejo. With the help of our airbrush, we will cover the entire sculpture using the first color, flesh. We will apply an even coat across the surface, ensuring no area is left unpainted. For the second color, we will apply red terracotta. A helpful tip when applying shadows is to paint from the bottom up, as this will allow the airbrush to more easily identify the areas that need shading. Remember, the result may not be perfect, but this technique will be very beneficial. Don't worry if you apply too much paint, as we can blend and correct the areas that shouldn't be shaded when we use our final color. Keep in mind that each sculpture is unique. In this case, the level of detail in the muscles will help us identify where to apply shadows, particularly in the muscle definitions, beneath the cheekbones and around the neck, among other areas. For our highlights, we will use the color Pale Flesh. Again, as a tip, we will paint our sculpture from top to bottom, which is the opposite of how we applied the shadows. This way, we will add more volume to the sculpture, preventing it from looking flat, and we will also blend the areas where we applied the shadows. For this process, we will apply the paint with a gentle pressure if you still haven't mastered the pressure exerted by your finger while using the airbrush, don't worry. With practice, you will get used to it. The important thing is not to give up. A helpful tip is to keep the airbrush at a considerable distance from the sculpture, avoiding getting too close. When we want to paint specific areas and enhance the details, it's important to bring the airbrush closer to the area that we want to paint. We should also use a light pressure on the airbrush. If you'd like a video explaining the use of the airbrush in more detail, please leave me a comment to let me know you're interested and I can prepare it. Once we have finished painting, this will be the final result. All that's left is to seal the sculpture with varnish to make the colors stand out even more. Don't forget to let the sculpture dry completely before sealing it. As you can see, the varnish has significantly enhanced the appearance of the colors. However, what will truly make our sculpture stand out is when we paint the remaining details, such as the character's hair, and most importantly, the eyes. Thanks to the additional details, our sculpture has improved significantly. As you can see, with just three colors, we can achieve great results. This method is perfect for beginners, especially if you're just starting out in the painting process and want to practice using the airbrush. If you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and shared it. If you'd like to continue with the next step, Stay tuned, as we will be implementing additional basic techniques to further enhance our sculpture and achieve more realistic tones. Here's an example of how the painting improves by applying the next technique. For this technique, we will use four colors and dilute them with water until we achieve a very liquid and almost transparent consistency. The Vallejo colors we'll be using are dark flesh tone, pale flesh, yellow ochre, 
and red terracotta. Additionally, we'll use a small sponge, a dampened kitchen towel, and a brush. Using our brush and the color dark flesh tone, we will begin to define the shadows even more. Remember that for this process, our sculpture must be sealed with varnish and completely dry. We shouldn't worry if we stain unwanted areas, as we can blend and remove the excess paint using a damp kitchen towel. Now we will implement the color red terracotta. We will use this color on the skin areas, which will help us add more realism to the tones. There will be areas that show more reddish hues than others, and this will also depend on the character we are painting. For this technique, it is essential to be patient, as we need to apply more than one layer of paint. Since our paint is diluted in water and has an almost transparent consistency, the application will be very subtle, nearly imperceptible. However, this is the desired effect, as it will allow us to have better control and, most importantly, facilitate the blending of the paint. Now we will continue with the color Yellow Ochre. We will use this color only in certain areas, such as the areas of greatest definition in the muscles. Finally, we will use the color Pale Flesh. We will apply this color to further enhance our highlights. The advantage of having the paint well diluted is that, when applied, it will spread and blend, making the painting process easier and helping us to provide greater volume to our sculpture. Once we have completed this process, we will allow our sculpture to dry before sealing it again with varnish. This is how our sculpture looks once it is completed and fully sealed with varnish. We only need to paint the eyes and hair for it to be completely finished. If you would like to see another video focusing more on the process of painting the eyes and hair, please leave a comment indicating your interest in a tutorial on how to paint eyes. Without further ado, here is the final result of the skin tones painted on our sculpture. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and share this video so it can reach a wider audience. For now, that's all from me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and always remember to practice, and most importantly, be patient. Until next time.